<clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Six String Podcast, the first ever episode, in fact. I'm your host, Six String TV. Um, over there in the corner, we have we have your co-host, co-host. KDH. Uh, today, for the very first episode, we are joined by someone who, ironically, uh, is not uh, known to be a guitar player. Finn McKenty of the Punk Rock NBA. <laughs> I am a guitarist, not the world's best one, but I am a guitarist and I have a... Uh... I don't know. I it, I guess it's a joke death metal band, but I think it's good. That that was actually one of the things uh, that I had written down was, <laughs> do you play guitar, or do you play what what instruments do you play? Because a lot of people actually wanted to know that as well. I can play guitar okay, uh, and drums badly. So you're just like me. I'm just like you exactly. We're we're basically twins. Uh, the name of the band is called Enpedestalment. Okay, okay. that's. I, I'm gonna need. To, I'm gonna need to. You know, when I watch this back, I'll check that out. To start this off, um, you know, for people who don't know you, which I feel like is this is gonna be half and half since since we have very very different audiences. Yeah. Um, we, we are both quite controversial channels, and as is KDH. But we we we're, the two of us are quite similar, and you. Uh, your sort of uh, other end of the spectrum controversial, <laughs> as I've yes. as I've noticed from you know the audience questions that people submitted. D- d- tell us, oopsie, tell us who you are. You know what what is the what is the punk rock MBA? How did you start? My name is Finn McKenty, and I have a YouTube. Well, I have two channels, three actually three now. Uh, one channel called the Punk Rock MBA, which is I guess you could say like music history and analysis or commentary. Um, you know anything. Anything under the umbrella of alternative music is kind of what I cover. So uh, anything from Linkin Park to Pierce the Veil to Ghost to Lil Peep, you know, is fair game to me. Anything that's, you know, any 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 band that could have ever played Ozfest or Warp Tour or anything like that is fair game to me. Uh, I have another channel called Finn McKenty, uh, which is obviously just my name. That's where I do kind of more like... I don't know. I think of it as comedy content. That's all my, uh, which is almost all Twitch clips. Uh, I also have a podcast on there where I've interviewed, uh, like I just did Matt from Avenged Sevenfold yesterday. Um, had like, I don't know, Sonny from POD and Mod Sun and Vic from Pierce the Veil, lots of other people. Uh, and then I have a third channel, which is my podcast clips. So not only are you a YouTuber, but you're also a Twitch streamer. Yes, sir. So, how would you how would you differentiate your content between live streaming and your more planned genre of of, of what you upload? The scripted stuff is um, basically just the facts. So, a lot of you know history of a given band or genre is kind of the bulk of it, and maybe some commentary. But uh, you know, I, I keep my personality out of that. The live stream stuff. And the second channel, which is clips of that, is where it's more, uh, you know, more personality driven. Again, I think of it as comedy content, just having fun. A thing that I, uh, we, that um, KDH and I noticed, is that the Punk Rock NBA channel and the Finn McKenzie channel, they are quite similar um, in in the content that that you make on there. What what? I mean, the podcast kind goes, of, but not really. A li- little bit, but, but but not really. Yeah. Okay. Um, like what what differentiates those like what, what, what would you say like oh no this is gonna be a second channel video or the, well the... like I said the the main channel punk rock NBA is pretty much just the facts and I keep you know humor and commentary I keep my humor and opinions out of that basically um, I don't know if you guys have watched them but it's pretty obvious if you actually watch the videos I, what I the difference is. I, I mean I, I haven't seen much besides a few podcasts on your second channel but I I do I do enjoy the the main one. Yeah, second channel is comedy, so that's the like I said, that's the main difference. I, I guess that's a good call to, to keep your personality out of your main channel, maybe. Yeah, they maybe don't like that. Maybe a few of us should take notes on that. I, well, I'd love to it's, talk it's, about like the audiences. So because it's you have you know multiple channels. If yeah. you've got because there are there are um, a lot of uh, opinions. Uh, mm-hmm. that people have on some of your videos where it's uh, uh, some people agree and some people strongly disagree. Yeah. And, it, and it's interesting to see that because I suppose we could all relate to, to that. Anyone on YouTube actually could relate to an audience disagreeing or, or agreeing, mainly disagreeing usually. Um, yeah. But 
it, it's interesting, like, it, do you find much spillover between your very serious content, you know, facts for that mm -hmm. audience? Do you find much spillover going over to the Twitch streams where it's more comedy and personal yeah. fin? I mean, I would imagine that probably everyone, you know, the biggest audience is Park Rock NBA, so I have, whatever, 450,000 subscribers there. Then my my second channel, Finn McKenty channel, is 120 or something. And Twitch, I have like 17,000 followers or something in there. So I would assume there's probably not too many people that watch me on Twitch that, you know, haven't seen my YouTube videos. So I, I think of it as a funnel. Um, there's probably some people that stumble across, across my Twitch streams that don't know my videos, but I would imagine that's a very small number of people. And which, which type do you prefer making? Like, do you prefer the Finn McKenty channel stuff? Do you prefer the uh, main channel stuff? It's always more fun when you can be yourself, right? Um, but, uh, you know, audiences have expectations, so, you know, you got to give the people what they want. I'm so sorry, guys. I just have to go for just one second. I'll be back in just a second. I just have to fix something. K KDH, what, what a stupid uh, name that is. <laughs> What a terrible person. Yeah, he su he's Irish, so he sucks. I hope his dog dies. <laughs> no, no, I, I heard. I heard. I heard. I had the headphones on. Uh, well, one thing that I noticed when I asked my audience um, to, like, you know, submit questions for you, which we're, we'll, we'll get to the viewer questions segment later, um, a bunch of them were like, oh, hell yeah, Finn McKenty, that's so sick. You know, I have a bunch of questions for him and submitted, like, I'm 20. I'm surprised. And then uh, the other half was like, fuck that guy. <laughs> That's what I would expect. The kind of videos that I make, especially the, the kind of music that I talk about and stuff, um, attracts very, very different people. Um, but, like the, the kind of people who watch my videos would call the kind of people who watch your videos very bad things. Well, I don't think that's true because otherwise they wouldn't know who I am and they wouldn't hate me. So I think it is a very similar audience. I think they just dislike me. <laughs> I would yeah, like I'm, to I'm talk sure, about that. I'm not sure why you're, you're, you're generally very likable. It's just, you know, opinions. Like eight, eight different people just said, why are his takes so bad? Which Well, I, I I'll guess... tell you why. It's because especially, so metal in general um, has uh, a lot of people who make their fandom into their whole identity. And so if you criticize something that they like, they take it as a personal attack. And that's why. And I've criticized metal many times in the past. And uh, that's why people don't like me. Um, and this is going to make people dislike me even more. But I'll just say it. I think metal, you know, is not for normal people. You know, metal fans, I, I would say there's especially the ones who tend to be super engaged and, you know, leave YouTube comments and stuff like that. I think that there's uh, some sort of a combination of... Um, you know, various different personality disorders, uh, trauma survivor. No, I'm not joking. I'm yeah, not, I'm no, not no, joking. No. I'm not making fun of them. I think there's a lot of like various different types of personality disorders, um, like oppositional defiant disorder and stuff like that. Um, autism and, uh, trauma survivors. And you put that together. I mean, why else would someone get into, you know, cannibal corpse or something like that? Like it's not, it, it's not the kind of music that's appealing to someone who's normal. And I say that as someone who's been listening to Cannibal Corpse since 1991, so you know I'm I'm one of those people. I didn't I didn't but laugh because because I thought you were making fun of him. I'm laughing because I'm already envisioning the comments under this now, um, which which will be hilarious. Yeah, I, I'm 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 honestly I'm not like none of that is a criticism. Like it it's just an observation of what I believe to be true, um, and uh, you know I I have criticized a lot of things that those people love in the past. And, uh, you know, and that, that upsets them, and I understand that. When when we talk about, like, uh, how what you've said has upset people, is there, like, any band fan base or music fan base, well, obviously it's metal, but any specific fan base that was really didn't take what you said well? Anything uh, that stands out? Black Metal and Ska, I would say, are the two fandoms that dislike me the most. That's, All right, that's... Uh I could have why, seen black metal why, why coming because, there? because because those people are just actually disturbed anyway. Like that's yes. not 
that, that, that's, that's not what that's not the, the stuff that you said about the you know, personality disorder that those people are just actually um not right in the head no surprises there yeah ska um ska surprise i was surprised me. by that one doesn't doesn't seem like the most aggressive fa of fan bases to me like i don't know you, yeah you ever been on accordion message boards those are incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well i think in that case it's kind of nerd rage you know because you know you think about who ska fans are especially in the in the in the current year you know it's, it's i would i would say like ska fans are like the band dorks you know um people who played trombone or something in high school band and ska gave them a place where they felt like they could be part of something you know a little bit cooler than band and so maybe these are people who are a little bit you know insecure in general i don't know but uh yeah, any criticism of ska gets people really, really, really upset. So my my basic framework is that the more social currency a given group of people has in real life, or should I say the, the less social currency that a given group of people has in real life, the more angry they are online. For example, I make fun of butt rock all the time. Nobody ever gets mad about that. <laughs> if I make fun of Shinedown or 6AM, zero people get upset about that. Fair because enough. butt rock fans are, you know, like in real life, they're busy with their jobs and families and stuff like that. You know, they're not, it's not their whole identity. Like listening to Shinedown is not an identity for them. So yeah. they don't get mad if I make fun of Shinedown. But, you know, if you listen to Ska in 2023, that's probably a pretty big part of your identity. And you'll get bullied um, And for those it. people... What's up? And you'll get bullied for it, inevitably. Yeah, so they feel like if I make a joke about Ska, they take that as being bullied. And, you know, to me, it's just a joke about Ska, but they don't see things that way. Yeah, well, well the whole... Ska is, is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it's it's really, it's just jokes. I do think Ska is terrible. Um, it, but Objectively, you know, it, yes, it is They're really fun, just though. jokes. Yeah, if you like Ska, good for you. You know, I'm I'm never I've I would never tell someone to stop liking what they like. This episode of the Six String Podcast has been brought to you by Factor 75. Do you like food? Hey, me too. We have so much in common. Us musicians are by nature lazy, and the few times a year that we aren't being lazy, we don't have time to cook. But today's sponsor, Factor 75, has you covered. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, chef prepared, and ready to eat meals right to your door. Factor eliminates the need for meal prepping, you know, if you're the type of person who likes to work out, but it still ensures that you get the good science backed nutritional quality that your body needs to grow big and strong. Meal plans range from 4 to 18 meals per week and can cater to any any dietary preference you might have, be it vegan, vegetarian, diet, keto, or just low calorie. No more messy cleanups, no more agonizing over what to cook. Just pick whatever you like out of Factor's rotating lineup of over 60 meals, snacks, and add-ons per week and chow down. So if you're based in the US and you want fresh, chef-quality meals ready to heat and eat in under two minutes so you can stay focused on doing what you love, go through the link in my description or go to factor75.com and use code FACTORSE31808 for 50% off your first box. Factor is only available in the US. What music do you like? Like there's a, there's a lot of here's the stuff that I don't like. What is what's something that you just think is perfect or close to perfect? Uh my favorite genre of music for the past couple years is pop country. Oh, okay. Like a uh, big fan of uh, artist named Kelsey Ballerini that kind of blew up in the past few years. Like her a lot. Um yeah, that sort of thing. That caught me by so surprise. So, do you enjoy, like, having to listen to and talking about the stuff that you don't like? Because that's kind of, well, it's your, your job, is yeah. listening to the stuff that you don't like. Uh, It's fine. I mean, I've had lots of crappy jobs. I did printing from the time I was, like, 15 until I was 23 or something. Which, that really sucks, you know, just standing there for 10 hours in a row, punching holes in books, you know, for $11 an hour. That sucks. So... You know, if I have to make a video about a band that I don't really enjoy, no big deal. That's fine. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, the, it could be a lot worse than having Absolutely. to listen to Linkin Park or whatever. Absolutely. Do, do you get a lot of comments when you when you talk about something that you do like for once? Do you just get comments like <laughs> shitting on you for, for yeah, not? Yeah, I don't I don't bother talking about music that I like because I get low views and negative comments. So there's really no reason. Yeah. I mostly listen to pop country, pop and rap, and my audience hates all that stuff. 
Um, so there's no reason I would talk about music I enjoy because, you know, I'm here to make the content the audience wants and uh, I'm not going to shove my tastes down their throat. Yeah, right. So what got you into making this sort of content or content in general? You know, going from, from printing to, to YouTube is a big, there's a big well, chasm I started, between those. Yeah, I started out making fanzines back in maybe 1993 or so. Um, and which for anyone who's not familiar is basically like a little homemade magazine type thing, which back then that was, uh, you know, that we, the, the word content didn't exist back then, but, uh, you know, that was sort of the closest thing we had to YouTube back then. And then, uh, after that, once fanzines and print stuff started to decline, I started doing blogs back in the mid to late two thousands. I had a reasonably popular blog at the time called Metal Inquisition, where we sort of made jokes about like old thrash and death metal. Uh, I also wrote for Metal Sucks for a long time, for maybe five years or something like that. And then as blogs stopped to become, you know, it became clear that blogs were basically not the thing anymore. Then uh, I said, well, I, I always want to go where, you know, the people are, where their attention is. And I said, well, I guess I should start doing YouTube. So I started doing that in 2017 and it took a while to kind of you know, because YouTube, as you guys know, YouTube is hard. Um, and uh, I think it was maybe sometime in the end of 2018 or something that I actually started getting views. Right. And like, so I've had a look at your most popular videos and it's something mm -hmm. that I always think is, is interesting with, with YouTubers because I think anyone that I've talked to, their most popular videos were never the ones they thought would be popular. Is that yeah. the same with you? I did not understand um, how much people love new metal at first, um, and now I realize it's basically the only thing people like. <laughs> um, so, because uh, I, I mean, I remember when new metal, like especially like Limp Biscuit, was the most hated band on the planet in two thousand one. I mean, it was completely unacceptable for anybody in the you know metal scene to say that they liked Limp Bizkit or Korn or Slipknot or any of that stuff. I remember like I I was trying to start a band in like 2001 or 2002 or something and I was playing with this drummer and he sort of sheepishly confessed to me. He's like, well, you know, actually I kind of like Slipknot, you know, expecting me to throw a bottle at him or something, you know, because that that's how people thought about new metal at the time. And now, of course, it's the opposite. Like you have to like new metal. Um, and so I, I was not expecting that, but all, all, a lot of my most popular videos are about new metal. If, if you, I know, I know you've, you've said that you, because you listen to, to, to pop country yeah. and you play in a death metal band, like you don't like new metal. I'm assuming. Not really. I mean, so yeah, it's not my favorite thing in the world. That's, that's really interesting. You've got a very, uh, wide palette of, of music. I listen to literally everything. I mean, I, I will listen to opera or jazz or rap, like it, literally anything. I, it does not matter to me. I relate to that. It's uh, it, it, it just seems to me like most other people, I made a video once um, about, uh, I think I just called it, there's something good in every genre. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally, I pointed out genres that were like just genuine, very hated. And yeah. then I just, gave people a couple of albums and said, listen to this. It's very, very good. That is my least viewed video ever. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Of course. It's, people do There's, not like when you point out yeah. that there is good music outside of the music that they enjoy. It, yeah, it's yeah. pointless. There's no reason to do that. It'll get low views. People will just tell you that you're wrong. There's no, there's, it's a complete waste of time to make videos like that. Trying to get people to like underappreciated things that they don't like is a fool's errand. I got, I got like exclusively negative comments on that video because like people, um, people said, you know, no, you're wrong. This genre sucks and that genre sucks. And then I made a joke in the video and said, you know, except for reggae, because no, there's no good reggae music. And then reggae fans got pissed at the me reggae too, fans so nobody mad. enjoyed that. Yes. Yep, exactly. That's why I don't bother, you know, talking about music I like unless I know my audience also likes it. Fair enough. So your audience, obviously, we're talking about uh, getting views, and there yeah. is obviously, as we all know, more views in negativity yep. for whatever reason. I've, I don't know why uh, you would think that positivity would attract, but for some reason... It's a very well-documented thing in psychology called negativity bias, which is that 
people uh, have stronger recall of what they call negatively valenced information, meaning things that you know have sort of a negative connotation. Um, evolutionarily, it makes sense because it's more important for you to remember where the saber-toothed tiger lives than how pretty the sunset was last night. <laughs> I mean, I so, guess yeah, I, I, suppose. I, I think that's why. I guess this applies to everything too. That like, like people don't watch people hugging on TV. They watch like wrestling and shit. Yes, conflict. Do you like when your audience disagrees with you, or no. would you prefer if your audience agreed with you? Um, there's no like. I mean, I'm okay with it. You know, I understand that it's part of the deal. But you guys know how it is. Like, what's? It's just not enjoyable to have like you know to wake up and see hundreds of comments of people just telling you that you're a fucking idiot and everything you think is terrible and wrong it's like what's why bother doing that that's there's no point in that you know and it's mm. not good for business either you know if people genuinely dislike you as a person they're not going to keep watching your videos unless you want to be one of those people you know that just is, gets hate watched and i don't i don't want to do that that's taken it a bit too far i just I, I'm, I'm sort of i'm conflicted personally because i'm like I make a lot of negative videos too, and then occasionally, like, well, people, someone called me a negative Nancy once. <laughs> That's the most yeah, grandma, you are. The most grandma shit ever. But like, <laughs> it's true though. Yeah, it is. I am. Uh, I get that. My my most viewed videos are definitely just me shitting on things. But yeah, then yeah, pe people just don't want to see anything else. So it's nope. What's gonna get more views? 10 reasons why six feet under is great or a hundred reasons why six feet under is fucking horrible. Yeah, that's it. That is it's obvious. My my most viewed video is just shitting on Chris Barnes and making fun of his hair. <laughs> yeah, that's all people want, especially, you know, especially in metal, but it, it's everywhere. I mean, you know, look at look at mainstream news, like the news headlines, you know, if, like they say, if it bleeds, it leads. It's just a fact of human psychology. People, you know, want negative content. So I guess it's especially, especially in metal music. I guess because you're, you're already a certain kind of person if you like that yeah. music. So, but of so course, it's especially also, if it's you're already in that scene, you're like, yeah, fuck yeah. It, it's also a, a, like it is fair though. Like, I I, I understand obviously as, as you, you just mentioned out, it's, it's psychological that people seek out negative things. But if you were hoping for I suppose a level of honesty you are going to get a level of honesty through negativity because no one is positive about everything if you present i don't like this genre of music i hate ska or, or whatever it may be yeah. that is you being honest and you are delivering an honest view about something so i suppose you could play to the strengths of of the ska fan base if you wanted to and pretend that ska was amazing and you probably would generate a big fan base of people who likely agree yeah so would your your main audience what genre of music do you think that they would be interested in new it's, metal. it's definitely not ska <laughs> no, it's, well no they love ska also um so for my main channel videos basically what i do now is i mean i can find positives in almost anything you know um so what i've basically started doing is i just don't say anything in the i don't, don't say any of the negative things about stuff that i know my audience likes so i i view my job on the main channel is to validate their taste in music so say positive things about artists that they like basically we looked at your um at your most viewed videos yesterday the the new metal one is number one and i think the yeah. second place is uh we need to talk about ronnie radke <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not expect that one to be so big. I, I would, but of have course, in either, hindsight, quite frankly. But that was 2019 or 2020, 2019 maybe. Yeah, 2019. So of course, in hindsight, I'm not surprised. But that was before Ronnie, you know, blew up the way that he is now. Has has there any been like a? Because you've you've talked about music a lot. Have yeah. there been artists where you've talked about them before they were like obviously Ronnie, but. Have there been other examples of that where you've talked about someone and you've said it's good or it's not good or, or whatever the case may be, and then they become much more popular than they were? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can go back to stuff that I wrote on Metal Sucks in 2010. I was telling everyone that Bring Me the Horizon was, you know, the best band of the generation and that they would be considered real music. And everyone said I was gay and I suck and blah, blah, blah. 
obviously I was right about that one. I mean, I don't really care for their music personally, but I think objectively they're a great band. I just, I wouldn't choose to listen to it. As a YouTuber, do you have, because you've been making videos since 2017, that's mm -hmm. that's a long time. You, you've built up uh, quite a few videos across multiple different channels. Is there any one that you just go, yeah, that's, that's the video? Uh, anything about new metal <laughs> is pretty much guaranteed views. <laughs> And as long as I say positive things, the audience will love it. I'm going to put yeah, new like, metal in the favorite. title of this video. Definitely. It's going to be like Finn McKenty talks about new metal. Yes, do that. Yes. <laughs> but is there like a favorite video? Like you, you uh, have your favorite. I made that. I'm proud of that. Uh, Yeah, I think my video about emo rap from 2020, I think, is a very good one. Uh, I was 100% right about all that. Okay. Well, then viewers or listeners, go watch that. Yeah, I used to talk about that stuff a lot, but I stopped because my audience just hates it. Um, so I just, you know, there's no reason to keep trying to force it. I mean, I've, I've, I've feel been recommended a, a that video of... a few times, definitely. I've it's never great. watched it, though, because I've, I've always been like... Because you don't like it. I, I don't listen to that music. I'm not going to watch yeah, that video. People do not click on videos about artists that they don't like. So there's no reason for me to make videos about audience ar artists that my audience doesn't like. Yeah. Do you feel maybe a little bit confined to just making videos just for your audience? Do you ever feel like you want to do like a, I want to do this for me? Uh, I used to, but I don't think that way anymore. To me, you know, it's the same as in, in my career, you know, I've done marketing and product development for 20 years or so now. And, uh, you know, my job as a marketer and uh, someone designing products, you make the product that the that the user wants not the one you want you know what i mean like if you're designing cars it doesn't matter what you how, how you prefer to drive you know you're here to make a car that's gonna you know be driven by millions of people you're only one person so as the designer your own tastes are not important you know it's you're you're here to make what they want not what you want um and often t i mean it's a very normal thing like designers and creators are different from the audience so there's no reason to expect that your own interests would align with the audiences all of the time. So I, I just look at it now as like, I'm here to make, my job is to make content that my audience enjoys. And if that overlaps with my own interests, that's great, but it doesn't have to. It's more of a job than like a, a passion project thing. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about it. I put a lot of fucking energy into this, but it's like, I don't need to, I'm passionate about growing the channel you know um i'm not passionate about forcing my own interests on the audience um and it's just the nature of how youtube is is you know people want you to be one thing i've all, i've come to find this is i mean i haven't been doing youtube that long at all i've been doing it since like i think uh, october 21 um but you know I, i've also come to find that if i even if it's like a negative video, I'll, I'll just make a video about something that people don't like that I personally, I'm just indifferent about it. Cause I used yeah. to make videos about things that I don't like and just shit on those. And then, you know, people would, those would be well, uh, well received as well. But like I made a, uh, made a video about Lucas Mann from Rings of Saturn. I don't care mm -hmm. about Rings of Saturn. I don't care about how he blackmailed his record label or anything. People like that video though. I'm sure they do. Cause he's a very unpopular guy. Yeah. At least now. So, yeah, you just you just tell the audience what they want to hear. You know, that's that's the way to win. And you've been on YouTube for such a long time. Have you noticed like a big change across that time? Did you prefer the older YouTube? Are you content with the the new way YouTube is? The how the algorithm works? I mean, you I, don't really have a choice, but yeah, I did not watch YouTube at all really before I started making videos. Really, I did maybe a little bit, but not really because. Uh, for a long time, you know, for the first 10 years or so of YouTube, it was either, at the beginning, it was just like stupid cat videos and stuff that, you know, I don't, I don't care about. Um, and then it was kind of for kids like the Shane Dawson era and all that stuff. And like early PewDiePie and stuff, which, uh, I was sort of aware of that, but I was an adult, so I'm not going to watch a Shane Dawson video when I'm 29 years old or something, you know? Um, and, and it wasn't until you know, the mid 2000, mid 2010s, that it started to be something more similar to what it is now. 
So I don't really know that much about what YouTube used to be like because I didn't really watch it. Um, I think it's great now. Like, I mean, I would I would choose YouTube if if I could only choose one video platform. Like, I would pay a hundred dollars a month for YouTube. It's amazing and great, and I love it. That, that's that's part of the like a cool thing about having you on is the fact that. I am 17, so my angle on YouTube was that I grew up watching Markiplier play video games. Right. And then right. I, I was like, I want to do this. And ever since like I was eight years old or something, I said, at some point, I want to make YouTube videos. And when I was 16, I said, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. And your thing was you were already in media and that was just the next big thing. So that's, yeah, that you started to, that's, that's, you know, fun how different people have different angles, just depending on age, I guess. Yeah. And so was your first channel, like on YouTube, it was Punk Rock NBA. Yeah. That was the first one. Where'd the name come from? Well, um, do you guys know what an MBA is? Uh, like a, a Master of Business um, Administration? Yeah. yeah. So the original angle, so the, the name the name from the channel came from the original angle as I was going to talk about business, because that's sort of my actual passion. Um, that's what I've dedicated my career to. That's what I went to school for. You know, that's what I like. I don't really listen to music or anything for fun. I listen to business podcasts and I read business books. That's 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 my actual passion. Nerd. Um, and so I was I was going to talk about business from the perspective of somebody who grew up, you know, in like the punk and metal scene and stuff. Um, but uh, nobody cared. And also I realized nobody actually knew what an MBA was. <laughs> so I said, well, I know, I, I definitely know how to talk about music because I've been doing that for a long time. So I pivoted to talking more about music and that's when things really took off. Um, so that, I, I don't remember the question. Well, would you ever go <laughs> back to doing, <laughs> would you ever go back to, to doing, you know, some of that business stuff now that you've got like an audience, maybe they'd be interested now. No, there, I, I, I've tried a few times and uh, I think music, music fans um, are at best indifferent to music, to business at, and I would say more often than not, they hate it. Like anything that involves like money or achievement of any kind, um, they tend to have extremely negative, hostile you know, uh, opinions of it. They don't want to hear something positive about Amazon or whatever because they hate Amazon because I believe that I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know, but I believe that there is like a huge, there's something called oppositional defiant disorder. If you look it up, it's basically people who just like rage react to authority figures of any kind. I believe that there is a massive amount of oppositional defiant disorder among alternative music people, especially metal people. So, um, yeah, that's, 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 again, well, that's kind of what the genre is built on, I feel like. Exactly. Exactly. I, I'm not, again, I'm not here to force my own interests on the audience. You know, they don't want to hear about how to get a promotion at your job or how to start a business or something. That's, they're not interested in that. They just want to hear good things about Lincoln Park. That's a bummer because <laughs> I, I, I would watch every Finn McKenty business video. That's, that's sick because I'm, I, I'm, I'm I'm trying to you know get more into that stuff. That's that'd be that'd be funny coming from someone who usually makes uh, videos about music. Yeah, I mean, I, there's there is some on. I would have to start over from scratch because my audience just has so many. They're like inherently hostile to that. So yeah. I would have to just start over completely from scratch and build a whole new audience. I, and I, I feel I like don't maybe really want to do that. Like like less than 0.5 percent of your audience probably knows what, yeah. what your name stands for. Like. Yeah, because I mean, for a while there, I wondered because because I was like, well, it, um, it it it, ca it can't be like master of business administration. <laughs> What's that have to do with anything? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, I, guess, a, I guess even if you know what an MBA is, it's it's difficult. But nobody to nobody out. knows, nobody knows, which I, I sort of foolishly thought people would know that, and that was a dumb assumption to make on my part. Still a cool and do you actually here. have like an MBA? No, I thought about getting one, but there's really no reason. At this point in my life, like there, there's really only two reasons to get an MBA. Number one is if you want to be an executive at a Fortune 500 company, and I don't, um, and that ship has sailed anyway. Uh, number two would be if you want to do certain kinds of consulting, like high finance or management consulting, and uh, I don't want to do that either. So um, I, there's really would be no benefit for me to do it at this point. I did think about it, though. Oh. Well, like you said, um, business is like 
that's that's one of your your passions yeah um is like what what made you go for for that was that just something that you stumbled upon because if you're coming from a punk rock background mm-hmm. uh, how how did how did you get into kind of the opposite of punk rock <laughs> well i don't I, I i understand why people would think that it's the opposite of punk but that, i don't think that's true at all like every label was started by an entrepreneur every venue every magazine every youtube channel every band like these are all businesses you know and they can't even even if money isn't your primary motivation which i think it, it isn't for most people in music it has to be a viable business in order to just exist, right? So um, I, I think actually business is the foundation of all these. Like, what if these labels didn't exist? What if venues didn't exist? What if YouTubers didn't exist? That's the actual like infrastructure of the scene. Guitar companies, for that matter, you know, if guitar companies didn't exist, what what would you play? Um, so I, I don't agree. I understand why a lot of people think that those are diametrically opposed. I don't, I don't think they are. Um, so I started out, you know, making zines and stuff. And again, to me, like, I'm not one of these people where I just make art and I don't care if other people like it or not. And, and I respect if other people are like that, that's totally cool. I respect that. But for me, the challenge the interesting challenge is can you get other people to care about this thing because that's fucking that's the fucking hard part right sure making is. editing videos and stuff is hard enough but making getting people to watch them that's the hard part <laughs> you know making a song that anybody listens to that's the hard part yeah so the, the real th- takeaway from the that part. part earlier by the way is that if you want to be real punk rock you have to build your own guitars <laughs> because you can't <laughs> use something built by a big company in a factory that's that's you know that's a that's a no-no. No, absolutely against the rules. Um, so I, I didn't know that I didn't know that I was into business because I thought I was just like, well, I made this fanzine. How am I going to get people to buy it? And so I figured out how to advertise and do collabs and blah, 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 all that stuff. And I ended up selling a few thousand of them through the mail when I was in high school in the 90s, which is hard, you know, that I would be going to the post office and sending off zines to finland or whatever you know when i'm 16 years old um in hindsight is actually pretty cool um and so i i i think i just sort of was naturally always wired that way and then i got a job at this industrial design agency when i was about 25 uh and i didn't know anything about industrial design at the end of, at the time industrial design is product the the design of physical products so you know the iphone would be kind of the classic example is like you figure out how does it work? What does it look like? You know, and then you work with, you know, mechanical engineers and stuff and industrial engineers to, to get it produced at a factory. So, uh, I got a job at a company, um, at an agency that was doing stuff for Procter and Gamble, which is a huge consumer products company. The main things we worked on there were like Swiffer, Febreze, and, uh, did a bunch of stuff for like Tide and Pampers and Olay, a lot of these just giant global brands. And uh, I got exposed to basically the marketing function of Procter & Gamble, and that just made a light bulb go off of like, oh, this is actually what I'm interested in. So like, I I went to school for graphic design as well. And I thought, at at first I thought I was interested in design. Um, And I, I am to some extent, but what I realized I'm actually interested in is marketing and strategy. And so that just sort of that experience of working with P&G is what really made the light bulb go off for me. And ever since then, that's really been my obsession. That's a that's fun really backstory, cool. actually. Yeah, like you yeah, would was not amazing. expect that. You would, yeah. you'd, you'd completely not expect that from from, uh, you know, uh, videos that are are controversial about music to come from someone who, who is like in school for graphic design and has this this background in marketing for a major company yeah it's, it started you, like you, you selling shit that. really in, cool. in like high school like magazines yeah, that, that's really cool when you went from graphic design and on all of that has that has those helped you further all your youtube stuff or do you think you could have done any of this without any of that background um you know, I mean, I, I make my thumbnails and stuff like that, um, but I don't think you don't need to be like a graphic designer for that. Like I did graphic design for a job for years and I think I was pretty good at it. Like I, I was also a graphic designer for Hollister and Abercrombie um, in 
from 2009 to 2012. Um, so if you were in high school then and you wore either of those brands, there's a very good chance that I designed some of the stuff. Um, but you don't need to be like a professional graphic designer to make thumbnails. Um, so I, I don't know that it's like directly relevant to YouTube, but one of the other things, so my quote unquote day job is, uh, if, or if you guys are familiar, familiar with Nail the Mix, um, I'm a partner in that company. And so I do all the product management and design of the user interface stuff uh, for our product. And so, you know, I, I certainly couldn't have done that without going to school for it and doing it professionally for years. That, that's funny, because I feel like, I mean, speaking from experience and also just, I feel like this is the case for a lot of other um, YouTubers as well, is <laughs> they're just people sometimes who start off with no discernible job skills and then make YouTube videos and that gives you experience in video editing and you know using Photoshop and stuff and suddenly and community development and all to yeah. being a YouTuber is hard as fuck yeah and, and suddenly you have all of these job skills but you started off because you were like shit I can't do anything so I'll make yeah. YouTube videos yeah and you were you had all the experience and were like okay yeah. now, now I'll make YouTube videos yeah yeah, that's the reason why. And I also made videos professionally before that. I also worked for this action sports magazine called Flow Multizine from 2004 to 2006. Uh, we It was like a hybrid. This is before YouTube took off. So this is like a hybrid. It had a DVD um, and a print magazine and a CD. I did all the stuff on the DVD. So we did stuff with like Bam Margera and Jimmy Eat World and Quicksilver and Rockstar Games. And they would pay us you know, a couple thousand dollars to make a segment about some new game they're working on or something like that. And I made all those videos and they were horrible. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not proud of the stuff I did, but I learned how to make videos from that. So I, I did already have all the skills to do this. And that's probably why my channel took off faster than a lot of other people's may have. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing is, is like you, you started relatively late, you know, c compared to some. Yeah. Yeah. C compared to the, the OG YouTube guys. And I the thing is you have to but when youtube started people recorded in their mom's bedroom with their phone and yeah you know at, at this point if you're starting a channel people expect a certain standard so i guess yep. it, yeah you you have to have that that's why when i started my channel i would have started way earlier but i was like no no i have to have a studio built and have good lighting and everything otherwise no one's gonna watch my shit anyway and so you know i waited and it paid off because my first video got like a hundred thousand views so oh wow yeah um so like you need to know how to make quality content to begin with. Otherwise, you know, no one's going to watch it until it gets good. Well, that's you're competing true. with everyone. Everybody on the platform, every video that's in the recommended beside your video, if mm -hmm. you can't keep that person's attention, there's <laughs> 25 other videos on the side and there's a billion other ones on the homepage. So it's... it's We all have to compete against, I suppose, the biggest YouTuber, like Mr. Yep. Beast. We're all competing yep. against Mr. Beast because he might yep. be in the recommended. Uh, it, it gets... And you're also competing with TikTok and video games and OnlyFans and all the <laughs> other things that they could be doing with their attention. You know, why should they watch your video about guitars instead of look at some girl's asshole on OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tough choice. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean that's definitely that's definitely true. Like every time there's there's some new shit, is probably like for for people who've been who've been creators for a while. Like every time is like, oh, here's be real, and here's here's this and that. People are probably like, shit, th th not not more apps to distract people from yeah. what I do. Which I which gets back to the thing we were talking about earlier is, I, I like why would anybody if I was just making videos talking shit about things my audience likes. Why would anyone watch that more than once? Yeah. You know, you just be like, this guy's a fucking asshole. Like, I'm not going to subscribe to some guy's channel just to hear him, like, talk shit about all these things I enjoy. Yeah. Why would someone watch that? And have you, with with the, you, you mentioned TikTok, have you tried to pivot towards YouTube shorts or TikToks? Or have you steered clear or have you just dabbled a little bit? What's the approach there? Um, I hate short form content personally. I don't watch it. I don't enjoy making it. It's just not my thing. Um, and it also monetizes really badly. I don't think that will ever change for technical reasons that I won't bore everyone with. But I, basically, I just don't think that sh I, I, I don't think it's ever going to monetize well. Um, 
and uh, I pay somebody to make my TikToks, just like making clips from my videos. They do okay, um, and it's not her fault. She does a good job. It's just I don't I don't think that my videos lend themselves well to TikTok, um, and I, I just sort of accept that. And shorts, same thing. I just I just I, I don't. I'm not interested if you have to make short form content to be relevant then i'll just quit because i just don't want to do <laughs> yeah. it and i don't think it'll ever be worth i mean you know like the fact that TikTok doesn't monetize like why the fuck would i invest a bunch of hours i could get four million views on a TikTok and make zero dollars why would i spend money on that right. why, why why would i spend my time on that oh so there is just content that just lends itself very well to short form things like I'm gonna mention we're gonna mention Mr. Beast again like yeah mi like Mr. Beast and shorts Qatar. are insane because he'll he'll just like spend a hundred thousand dollars on making a single YouTube shot but yep and, and our thing would just be like take a clip from one of our videos that's on YouTube and then say go yeah. watch the full video like that doesn't work I've tried it too it's just it's just con there's just content that doesn't work that way yeah it's just not great and I accept that you know there's only so much time in the day and yeah i don't i'm not desperate for attention and clout so if that's what i have to do to stay relevant i'll just quit i don't care um all right yeah, so this is this is such an interesting talk i'm enjoying this it is well, thank you and so so i'm gonna make it um just inherently less interesting by bringing viewer <laughs> questions into it <laughs> let's do it you can ask me the negative ones too that's totally fine uh, the, the negative ones weren't questions, the negative ones were just, fuck that fucking guy. And yeah, then at, okay. at some point they, they just also started coming not only for you, but for your wife and shit. So oh like, yeah, they don't like her either. Yeah, they, they, they don't like anyone. Also, before, after I said the, the, um, the viewer questions, that's where the, that's where the ad, ad read is gonna be. Question. So I'll start off, uh, we, we each have a couple. Okay. Um, they are both from, from Instagram. And then from YouTube community uh, posts, which Instagram was much less toxic. Uh, one of them was just, when are we going to see him playing guitar? Also, where are his music projects at? You answered that one in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, when I You're never you going to see me playing guitar because I already know everyone will just say that I'm terrible. Um, I'm not terrible, but I'm not great. You know, and uh, the people are so fucking good at guitar now. It is ridiculous. Like just the average fucking random 16 year old on TikTok is better than 99% of people in pro bands from the 90s. The the people are so fucking good now. And uh, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to compete with that. Yeah, that's that, that's another thing is like when, when I picked up guitar when I was 13, I uh, for like years, I played eight to 10 hours a day to try and get as good as possible. And when I started the channel, I was like, uh, that's when I really started looking at social media guitarists and stuff too. And I was like, nah, fuck that. I, I'll just talk in my videos. Like this, this, <laughs> yeah. that, that's not worth it. Cause I'm, I'm never going to be like, you know, I, I, I can't think of any particular name right now, but just, just guys that look inconspicuous and then they pick up a guitar and they shred like they've been playing for 53 years. Uh, I'll send you a link here in the chat to my uh, quote unquote band. <laughs> um, just so you guys have it, if you want to do anything with it, I'm uh, def definitely it gonna go watch that. Also, definitely just gonna copy that link and put it in the video description. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that that answers both of the questions. We're not gonna see you play guitar, and your music projects are at um, well that that link that he sent in is gonna be in the description. There we have it. Okay, let's let's, let's alternate. Um, I'll let uh, okay, KDH take right, over the next question. Here's an interesting one. Here's from someone who strongly disagrees with you. I know you're, you'll be shocked at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Finn, how could you possibly say pop punk is a good thing to rock music in today's media? I personally feel pop punk is what killed rock. As soon as you said Machine Gun Kelly was doing something good with his pop punk album, I lost my shit. I haven't had a minute of sleep since. <laughs> I saw that video and I'm thinking about giving up on music and resorting to being a sex slave. Okay. Um, I, 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 I support this decision. Do it. But <laughs> can you really be a sex slave if you choose to be a sex slave? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that really just like uh, that's just like being a power bottom, I think, which is totally okay. But I think those are two different things. Um the the reason I like I don't think MGK's music is amazing. I think it's fine. Um but what you can't argue with is I mean he has two Billboard number 1 pop punk albums. 
with hundreds and hundreds. I mean, he's probably got billions of views on YouTube with these songs overall. And so, and he's in the headlines and stuff because he's an actual mainstream celebrity. And if you look at the times in which rock was the most popular, for example, the early 2000s is when you had all the new metal bands and the pop punk bands on TRL at the time when which that show was just like an absolute juggernaut. You had like Blink-182 literally facing off against Backstreet Boys in 98 Degrees, you know, on I'm too MTV. Young to be talking and, to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's this is the sad fact is that there hasn't been a time in your lives in which rock was relevant in this way. You know, and and so someone in their in their early 20s just they don't know any different. But there was a time in which, you know, Fred Durst and Blink-182 were on MTV with Britney Spears and Backstreet Boys. And that's when rock was at its biggest. So whether you like any of those bands or not doesn't matter. Um, like I said, I don't love MGK's music, but he is putting rock in the mainstream eye in a way that nobody else is. And that will ultimately be a good thing for the genre because there is some percentage of people who get into MG, who whose introduction to this kind of music is MGK, and then they go down the iceberg, and then they're listening to Infinite Annihilator two years later. Um, it, 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 I'm joking, but like that's how it happens. Just like how people got into, you know, Blink or Breaking Benjamin or something in the 2000s, and then they ended up, you know, yeah, I mean, starting. I mean, I mean my, Rings of my, Saturn. my intro to like this kind of music was um, was Marilyn Manson, which yeah, is like exactly. Yeah, that's but like like newer Marilyn Manson too, because that was it was only a couple of years ago. So like that that yeah. was like already just soft and tame. Then I got into his older right. shit, and then I dove headfirst into Slayer. So like yeah, that, that's exactly that is how it works. I like and how, and then fit for an autopsy. That's the pipeline. Yeah, basically. Um, I like how that comment was literally the structure of that comment was how can you say this? I personally uh, think that <laughs> the, the yeah. punk rock song. Well, yeah, I mean, really, what people want to do is just share their own opinions about music, which is totally OK. I'm happy if anyone gives a shit what I say about anything. I'm grateful for that, even if they don't like it. All right. Do you think that it's going to be like you, you were saying, you know, at that time that we weren't alive for or maybe I was but I wasn't able to walk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do you think music, like rock music or metal music, will ever get back to that point? Because it's been it's it's been a while. Yeah. Well, I would argue that it, it depends how you define it. Because there's artists like Lil Uzi Vert, for example, who, like, very clearly is influenced by emo and post hardcore and stuff like that. Like Lil Uzi Vert is a mainstream star. Same with Playboy Cardi, XXX Tentacion. There's a lot of these like alternative rappers that didn't didn't Lil I would argue just do like a metal thing. I saw that all over Twitter, just mm -hmm. people shitting all yeah. over it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It, it sounded <laughs> awful too, but I, I mean that's just yeah. But I mean it, it's a little pump. It's not. It's like yeah. it's not supposed to be good. <laughs> um, so I, I would argue that maybe not necessarily, but kind of, I, I don't know if I would say it's metal necessarily, but I would say that alternative rap is huge. And those people, for the most part, are more under the, they're, they're more influenced by alternative music than they are rap. You know, like if you ask, you know, Uzi or Lil Yachty who their influences are, they're going to say All Time Low and Escape the Fate before they say, you know, Biggie and Tupac. So I would argue, and those, you know, for those who don't know, these are extremely fucking huge, like giant mainstream stars. Um, Playboy Cardi is another one of those. I, I would argue that it, it is happening now. It's just that rock fans kind of don't see it because in the same way as people didn't think new metal was metal back in the day, they'd be like, you know, that's that's not metal. Like, how can you say metal is popular? Linkin Park and Limp Bizkit isn't metal. Well, 10 years later, they changed their tune. And now it's all online as well. So like there before it was on TV or it wasn't. Now it's right being retweeted by someone is, is almost as good as being on MTV. Totally. It's... But there are festivals like Rolling Loud, which, you know, is probably the most culturally relevant, like, you know, hip hop festival. And, you know, there's people like Uzi and Cardi and stuff headlining that. <clears throat> Next question. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to skip past this. But this one just says, why is his taste in music so bad? Uh, so I'm just going to we're just going to I will I will say um, it's interesting to me that people say that, because, as I said, I listen to literally everything. Um, 
But getting back to the negativity bias thing, people ignore if I like something they like, they just sort of ignore, they breeze past that and they only latch on to the times in which I, you know, don't agree with them. Um, but that's okay. If people think I have a terrible taste in music, you know, un unlike a lot of these people, my taste in music is not my identity. So it, it doesn't bother me if someone thinks I have terrible taste in music. Yeah, uh, honestly, I just, I stopped wearing you know, shit like this in my videos for the most part. Like, I don't, uh, like, and even outside, I just don't wear band merch anymore. I've just resorted yeah. to, like, blank shirts from H&M. Because it's just so much easier when people don't try to talk to you about the kind of things that you like. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll just wear something with Homer Simpson on it. That's not controversial, not anything. Just, like, leave me alone, please. I did buy a Slayer shirt just to wear in videos. Um, so that people would stop making fun of uh, my clothes. So, uh, and I do love Slayer, to be clear. I absolutely love Slayer. As um, do I. And as, as I predicted, everyone was like, hell yeah, brother, love your shirt. <laughs> yes, all the, all the 45 year old men yeah. in my comments are always, uh, are always just like, look, he has, he has the Kerry King signature amp. Oh, yeah. I, I played that in 18, 1988. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Great. All right. So, so, so getting to an actual question because i assume that one wasn't wasn't genuine uh wasn't wasn't meant to be a, to end up in the there were a couple just saying why is he bald like i don't i don't think those people wanted that to actually end up on the podcast well you, you know if you gotta resort to making fun of somebody's appearance then you've kind of lost the argument because i'm old that's why what do you think <laughs> <laughs> yeah this one uh this one says Finn, what video have you made on YouTube that has uh, given you the most amount of backlash so far? So, I mean, pe people might think that this is just your most viewed mm -hmm. video. Because, like, obviously... So, I actually, I did a video about this on my on my second channel. Um, about my most disliked videos. And uh, I believe that, I'm, I'm pretty sure my video called Why Do People Like Black Metal was the most disliked. The most backlash no surprise there the ska video was another one that was made people super angry uh i also made one called the problem with indie rock that people really didn't like that one kind of surprised me because i i didn't i felt like what i was saying was pretty safe but again i've learned that you can't really criticize anything without getting backlash unless you know unless you're picking a popular target you know like you could criticize mgk all day long and, and it's okay and then another one that people got really angry about was i made one called the problem with progressive music or problem with prog metal or something like that okay. um and oh, the uh, comments were probably this long just, just yeah paragraphs of, of from like reddit users yeah although you know i'm uh, people don't know this but like of, of all the genres the ones where i have the most personal friends is progressive metal like okay. like this is i've worked with all these bands for 10 years i'm friends with lots and lots and lots of them so um the idea that i don't that i don't like that I, I don't know like i'm balls deep in the prog metal world trust me on that and many people who are in the bands that i was talking about you know met like texted me and were like oh that that was great i've been trying to tell people all this stuff for years yeah, that, that's always funny when the people you're making videos about agree with you. Yeah. And then the fans are still like, no, go fuck yourself. Yeah. But, you know, the fans, you know, the, the fans, not. there's a reason why the people in the in, in the bands are who they are and the fans are who they are. You know, they're different people. Right. Okay. Well, I think um, we'll just ask like one more viewer question and then I suppose we should kind of wrap it up because it, it'll okay. be too long if it's not. Um, yeah. So let's go in. Speaking of new and unheard of bands, where does Finn think the landscape of this genre is going next? Punk has taken so many influences since its inception, like punk of the 90s and 2000s sounds drastically different from the sounds of the 70s and 80s. What can we expect to hear in the next few years? Well, I made a video uh, about this, um, where I talked about it quite a bit, um, about Suicide Boys. Do you guys know who they are? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I think that that is the future of punk, is like Suicide Boys in particular to me are kind of the, the, the biggest, they're kind of the leaders of this. But to me, punk is not a sound, it's a culture and a lifestyle. And that's been true forever. I mean, like if you listen to, you know, early punk sounds, you know, like fucking 
Lou Reed, you know what I mean? Or Velvet Underground type stuff. It's like sort of just like bar rock. Very different from later punk, like say No Effects or something like that. And I don't think anybody involved in punk, you know, even back in the 70s, I mean, punk was like a wildly diverse genre. There's stuff like, you know, the weirdos and the screamers that was like weird, artsy rock. You know, everything from that to like, say the Crow Mags or something, who's like borderline thrash metal, could all be called punk. So it's never been a sound. It's always been like a lifestyle and a culture and an attitude with sort of the central tenet being number one, DIY, and number two, being a complete flagrant disregard for the quote unquote rules that were established. And I find it funny that a lot of the, the, a lot of the people in punk have a very rigid idea of what the rules are and that you're not allowed to get like you're not punk if you wear the wrong kind of hat <laughs> like to me that's hilarious <laughs> like people say this you know like i wear nike hats a lot not so much even because i love nike but just because they fit me well um and people talk shit about me all the time like the, you can't be punk if you wear the wrong fucking brand of hat like to me that is absurd the idea that, like, it comes with a fucking uniform is the least punk thing you could possibly imagine to me. So uh, when I look at people like Suicide Boys or NASCAR Aloe or whatever, like, basically all these just kind of underground... I mean, Suicide Boys aren't even underground because they sell out arenas, but, you know, essentially DIY, and they are DIY, you know, they've they've had their own label, they've self-released everything and do most of their own production since the beginning. And they're selling out arenas, the same arenas that like Jack Harlow played the week before, um, which I think is amazing and really cool. And it's very clear, and they played in punk bands and stuff like that. So to me, that's that's the current like forefront of punk is basically underground rap that is you know sonically is rap but everything about everything else about it is punk that's a good that's a good way to put it actually i i i do like the point about <laughs> punk being about you know being very non-conformist and then yeah. people going no you cannot wear that right <laughs> put, i mean it's almost like off. Yeah, it, it like the least punk thing in the world would be uh, to to start a band that's a clone of the Sex Pistols. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure that everyone in the Sex Pistols would agree with that. You know, they'd be like, "We did that 45 years ago. Why would you just <laughs> carbon copy what we did in the 70s?" Yeah, the, the the same person who asked that question that was like a, a comment this long that contained like 15 questions. Um, uh, the, asked like if you, if you know of any sort of up-and-coming bands i guess uh, in, in the scene that you can recommend that people watching this will not know yeah i mean if you want to go there's a limitless number of unknown punk bands and uh, i i i couldn't tell you who any of them are because <laughs> it's not interesting to me and i'm not putting them down but just to me personally i think it's great that they're doing it but i've been listening to this stuff for a long time it's not interesting to me to hear a band that just looks and sounds like The Exploited because I heard The Exploited in like 1991 and I don't need to hear them again. If if they want to do that, I think that's awesome and more power to them. But for me personally, that's not that interesting. Um, I think it is interesting to see, you know, that there's places like there's a huge punk scene in Indonesia and I'm not really sure why. And uh, I think that's more interesting to me. If people are doing it in a place like that, which has a much more repressive authoritarian government to me that's a much more meaningful thing to do in indonesia than it is to do in america yeah, because the, it's much more a, genuinely rebellious there there's a saudi arabian black metal band yeah i i forget their name i can saudi arabian black metal Al well, either way is their name uh, they live like what double lives because they would be executed if someone found out what the fuck they're right. doing there was another one from Iraq years ago. I don't remember their name. That shit's cool. That's actually genuinely rebellious. Yeah. And, and they also, probably don't care what hat you wear. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. <laughs> yeah. And also Al Namrud is, is genuinely good music. I like I've I've listened to them. They're on they're on Spotify. 
<laughs> you, you might not think they'd be, but they are. So I, I guess the answer to that question is go listen to bands um, who, who make that kind of music in countries where it wouldn't be allowed. Yeah, that's, that is fucking brave. You know, I mean, it, it really is. And I respect it whether I, I, even if I don't like the music, I respect the shit out of that. That's taking a genuine risk yeah. to do something. All right. Well, I think we've got all the questions. That was a fun interview. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, this was this um, was a good podcast. Yeah. It was definitely a, a very good start. Um, very good start to the podcast. I will definitely be putting uh, the the word new metal in the title. Yes. Because <laughs> Finn McKenty talks about new metal is just gonna get views uh, either yes. way. Do that. So I I will I will capitalize uh, off of you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, no, I no, appreciate no. that. Finn McKenty talks about why he hates new metal. There oh, you go. Yeah, now you got yes, there you go. That's that's good. I'll, I'll think I'll, I'll think of a good thumbnail. <laughs> yes. You can use one of my Yeah, just one of my just, just crop cringy you out react of one of your faces. thumbnails. I have a I have a whole folder full of them. <laughs> I just made I just took like 10 minutes to just make a bunch of like cringy youtube faces and i gave those to my editor and he just picks a different one oh, that's that's a thing too is like i know everyone does that i i get in front of the camera after every video and just make a thumbnail face <laughs> i take thumbnail pictures after every video i kind of like the fact that i'll be like i'm wearing the outfit in the thumbnail that i have yeah. on in the video and stuff um see i like it that i'm not i think it's funny that i reuse the same ones and that it's the wrong shirt and stuff like that <laughs> i think it's funnier you can you can make a thing them. out of that i think pewdiepie did that when he went on vacation yeah. once he took one thumbnail photo and reused it for <laughs> two months and just just did different thumbnails with it and if you look at the video uploads and you scroll it's the same yeah face it's just the same like right the entire just thing. straight face uh well, finn thank you for for joining the podcast uh the first episode uh, make sure to subscribe and like the video and comment about why you disagree with what has been said because if you don't it, it, why, why bother especially why? especially that last part um, yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'll link uh, obviously uh, Finn's channels Finn, well Finn's, Finn's main channel in the description also you know his his music project um, KDH is in the description as well and you know you can somewhere around here you'll be able to subscribe to me and also thanks to factor 75 for sponsoring this video cool all right thank right. you <laughs>